You're listening to Lunchtime here on News Talk. Kira McDonough with you this Friday afternoon. Now, this time next week, the presidential campaign will finally be over and the counting will be underway. The vote, of course, taking place on Thursday and the candidates will have done all they can to win the race to the Oris. It's been a long few weeks on the campaign trail for all involved, especially the seven candidates. But one way or another, I believe that I will be in the race. I believe I'll be the ninth president of Ireland. Thank you very much. Maybe there's a not, a, not a level playing field between people who are part of a party and people who are non-party. Just because somebody else is doing it never makes it the right thing to do. And I have said from the outset that I want to run this campaign with a new style. I'm going to be looking at very much running a grassroots campaign, sort of Obama style, through the internet, through local fundraising activities. When people settle down and look at the field, uh, I hope that Fianna Fáil people and others will look at me because I want to get a broad base of support. I want to be president for all the people. Well, we see on the 27th of October how the people of Ireland feel about me. I'll rest my case until then. You're a generous, decent and good man. And I thank you. It's about democracy, David, and I hope we have a good campaign because I, sure I think will. the people will, in fact, benefit from a campaign on the issues. And you and I will have a good campaign. And let's hope the others do too. Thank It'll you. be really exciting. I wish you well. I'm delighted we met. Oh, you just can't help smiling when you hear that little last exchange between David Norris and Michael D. Higgins at the end of that music. Maybe a bit of a smile for the music as well. It's brilliant. Uh, thanks to our producer, Stephen Jordan, for putting that together for us today. But in the run-up to the presidential elections, we've been taking a closer look at the individual candidates and we're joined by Mick Clifford, who is covering the election for the Irish Examiner, joins us on the line on lunchtime this afternoon. Mick, uh, we heard a little bit of David Norris there having that exchange with... Uh, Michael D. Higgins and he just sounded so positive that night didn't he when he finally was sure that he would be on the ballot paper He did Kira, and I suppose you know that is a very appropriate juncture to look at the trajectory of David Norris's campaign his two campaigns really because he had one that ended on August 3rd and he the second one that began there around uh, mid-September but that was a high point for him to actually get the nomination and I suppose it reflected two things At the time, he was leading in the opinion polls in the country. That has come down an awful lot since. Now, there there would be two elements to that. First of all, a lot of stuff has been revealed about him that probably damaged him, primarily uh, the business of the letters that he wrote in addition to the first letter for his former partner who was accused of statutory rape in Israel. Yes. That would certainly have damaged him, along with a few other minor issues, the whole business about his disability pension, even though I must say, personally, I think he's been unfairly treated in that regard, because um, what what he did there is no different than what happens with hundreds, if not thousands of people at various stages of their career, particularly those working um, anything to do with the public service. Right. But in any event, all that would have damaged him. But also, you would have to conclude that one of the reasons that his polls were so high at the time is that there was a huge feeling out there that it would be an injustice if he didn't get nominated. Yet, that did not translate as all those who felt that way were willing to vote for him once he did get nominated. So do you think there was a grey area in those polls when people said that, yes, they would vote for him? It was mostly directed just at at that little victory of getting onto the ballot paper in the first place. But when it came down to it, maybe that support wouldn't have been there. But they were so keen that he should have the chance. Definitely. No, I I wouldn't underestimate the revelations that came out about him since either. I think they definitely played a significant part in that. And, you know, at this stage in the last poll, he's at 7%. Well, when he, when, he, when he opted out of the race the first time, if you recall, he stood outside the door of his home in North Great Georgia Street. And he in August, Beckett. I think, wasn't it? Yes. In August. Try again, fail again, fail better. And the fear would be that he may fail worse because if he hadn't bothered coming back, he could always have been, the could have been president, the man who left uh, trailing uh, the martyr's heir in his wake. Unfortunately, he's been exposed to an awful lot since he came back. And you ha- even though having said all that, he has certainly picked up in the last uh, week or 10 days. Yes. Um, prior to that, I mean, he, he, there was some polls there that showed a massive drop in his popularity. I was following him at that time and I was out in the square in Tallow with him one day. And I have to say there was a manic quality about his campaigning. 
Uh, he had particular beef at that stage with the media. I mean, at every juncture where somebody said, oh, David, we're going to vote for you, he'd call over to the reporters, come over here and look at this. Look right. how popular I am. And, you know, there was certainly a many quality to it. And on that occasion as well, just a, an incident, we were in the Eastons, and he said, um, he said, watch this, people are saying I'm blind. I'll pick out a book and I'll read from it. And he said, um, look at me, I'm going to walk in a straight line at six o'clock in the evening. If I was an alcoholic, like they're saying, if I was plastered, I wouldn't be able to do that. And, you know, there was that manic type of quality to his campaigning. Now, I think he might have calmed down a small bit since, and, and, okay. and that may be reflected in the next poll and in his vote. We'll just have to wait and see. Well, when you talk about the, the drop in support going from 14% in a, in a poll a couple of weeks ago to 7% last weekend, do you think there was such hype around him getting on the, the ballot paper? And as you said, then maybe those, those controversies that surrounded his campaign, some of them maybe wouldn't have done as much damage as you might have thought. Was it just the fact that he didn't score enough points along the campaign trail to balance out those controversies and maybe to, to make up for the hype that there was before the official start of the campaign? That could be the case. I mean, there's no doubt also that a large portion of his vote or in the opinion polls was, you could certainly ascribe to the anti-politician vote that was going to vote for one of the independents. And we saw this also with Mary Davis as an independent. And it would seem that particularly in his case and in Mary Davis' case to a lesser extent, the type of controversies that began to impinge in their campaign, that soft anti-politician vote sort of migrated from them towards Sean Gallagher, Sean Gallagher. who shot up to great heights Absolutely. in the polls. So that certainly would have affected him as well. But, I mean, he, he has recovered a bit. But, I mean, I, do, I, I think he's certainly out of the race. There's no question of him getting elected, unless there's the most dramatic second, third coming at this stage. <laughs> Well, he's candidacy. done it once before. <laughs> he has. He, he has done it before. Um, and I mean, some people would say that he, he never should have left in the first place, but I think he had a major problem on that occasion on the August weekend in that most of his campaign team walked away when these revelations came out about the letter to Israel. Yes. And I think that, more than anything, really put the kibosh in his campaign at the time. But as we see, um, there were certain uh, campaigns in the media to bring him back, and that probably... Uh, propelled the momentum. He appeared on the Late Late Show and then suddenly he got back in and, and, and he scraped through with the councils and I think it would have been a, a terrible injustice if he hadn't. That's but one, the thing. one wonders whether at the end of the day he may wish he hadn't because it hasn't been a very successful campaign for him so far. But then if he hadn't if he hadn't come back in and he had seen all those opinion polls, you never know, the, the polls could still be going on at this stage about people who would have voted for David Norris if he hadn't gone in. So maybe at least he knows this time he's given it a good a good, uh, a good good run the second time out and we'll all obviously all know next weekend. Um, just speaking about the, the final few days, Mick, of the campaign, what do we have until next Thursday at this stage? What do you think he should be doing the last few days of the campaign to, to make up for any loss that he's lost out in the polls to make the, the turnout for him as good as he can get over the next few days? Well, I suppose the, the problem there, and it's a problem they all have, is in terms of doing uh, positive things, it's far more difficult in a campaign like this because, you know, there are effectively no policies. You can't espouse new policies. You can't make promises, what have you. Now, last week, I mean, I, I, I saw it. It was a mistake in his part. He announced there was going to be a major announcement from himself, I think it was last Monday. A significant outside, announcement. Significant yeah. announcement mm-hmm. outside Leinster House. And, you know, people were wondering, well, obviously the first thing they were wondering is, was he opting out? And then they were wondering, you know, what else could it be? Must, or was he going to do an alliance or something or whatever? And it turned out to be a bit of a damn squib in that he criticised the Keane report, which apart from not being a significant thing in itself, it also meant he was impinging on the whole area of policy. So that was probably not advisable. I mean, it, it, it's difficult to know how he could recover at this stage. Then yesterday we saw himself and Michael D got into a spat over who had or hadn't voted for yes. the bank guarantee. And he dragged yes. up Michael D voting for the tax amnesty in 1993. And then on a the, the personal basis, they'd met each other yesterday. I think it was in Minute, and they all kissed and made up. Michael D said that, that his, the, 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 the release coming out from his camp, he didn't authorise it. But it, it, it's very difficult at this stage to see how he'd recover. I mean, you mentioned he never would have known if he hadn't got back in, and, and the opinion polls might well have said he would have been even possibly the most... A shoe-in. Pro- yeah. No, you can look at that two ways. At least now he knows the other side of the coin is, um, 
he'd certainly be walking around on a high, the greatest president we never had. That's true if, as well. if he hadn't got <laughs> back in, so it, it's difficult to know in that regard. Definitely is. Well, one person who we seem to come back with a few times in, in the last few minutes, Mick, is Michael D. Higgins. Um, as we said, kind of integral in getting uh, David Norris onto the ballot paper in the first place. What about a vote transfer pact? Do you think there's much prospect of it? It has been mentioned on both sides, one side saying they wouldn't be against it, other one saying there's been no discussions on it. What do you think is the likelihood? I, I, I wouldn't, somehow I wouldn't think so for this reason. I'd say if there's going to be any vote transfer pact, it'll probably be between Gay Mitchell and Michael D. Higgins. Um, I, I, I would think. Uh, the other issue is, you're right, I mean, Michael D. Higgins, he came out that evening in Dublin City Council and, and uh, asked the, his own party, the Labour Party Council, to vote for David Norris. Of course, some saw that as a completely political, cynical stunt in that um, David Norris would get into, would have got into the race most likely anyway. Sure. And, and, and now uh, Michael D was presenting himself as the magnanimous uh, candidate. But in any event, there definitely seems to be a very good relationship between them and they would come from a similar political background but if there was to be a voting pact, and then Kenny averred to it last night, it may come from um, Higgins and Mitchell naturally both being in the coalition parties. But it could well be, I mean, there's nothing in it for Dave Norris right. to have at, at this stage to have a voting pact. There's no jobs that the no. president can give out, but it may well turn out that way. And th- th- there's cert- you, you would certainly see an awful lot of transfers between the two one way or the other. OK, we're speaking with Mick Clifford here on News Talk, who has been covering the presidential election for the Irish Examiner and, of course, has been helping lunchtime to profile all the candidates over the last few days. Mick, uh, just to leave David Norris uh, into a more general point on the last few days of the campaign now, what way do you see it going? Obviously, uh, we can expect a poll or two over the next few days. Yeah, as far as I know, there'll be a poll on Monday. I'm not sure there'll be one on Sunday or, or how scientific a poll might be. I mean, it's quite obviously a two-horse race now between Sean Gallagher and Michael D. Higgins. As my, Sean Gallagher, the last poll, as we saw, he had, I think, was an 11-point lead or 12-point lead. I would suspect that's a very soft lead. And it, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how it changes. There has been a lot of stuff come out about Sean Gallagher in the last week that may go to damage him. As well, it could well be the case that people who be veering are, are kind of um, deciding whether or not to vote for him might view all the stories that have come out as the media hounding him and, and, and give him a sympathy vote as well. So it's difficult to see how that would turn out. On balance, you, you would have to suspect that bar one poll, Michael D. Higgins still seems to be in the driving seat. Yes. But again, if, if the polls over the weekend show that the momentum for Sean Gallagher hasn't let up, well then, I mean, if, he's, if he has anything like the vote that, that the last opinion poll put him at on 39%, he's home and dry. So it's very interesting from that point of view to see um, how things will pan out over the weekend and going into the last week. The polls on the last weekend tend to be very accurate. Um, about the actual vote because it's so close to it. They have certainly in general elections anyway. Okay, well, all eyes on those polls in the papers over the weekend and obviously all ears on News Talk over the weekend as well for full analysis and coverage of that. Mick Clifford, thanks very much for joining us today.